I'm Chief Medical Officer at Alcidian and uh, in that role I'm responsible for product design and helping uh, to generate the next uh, versions of the, of the platform that we're building and the technology and uh, also uh, explain that technology to clinicians and uh, people out in the field. We've got this kind of model in healthcare right now where you know if you're sick you go to see a doctor and you wait for an appointment or you wait in the ED. The great thing at the moment is great you've got now devices that can take data and then you go to your doctor right but really what we're talking about is a continuous model of healthcare where you've got data that it's going up into being monitored for you uh, as we're integrating other bits of data such as you know even things like giving you scripts knowing what medications you're on understanding your preferences what you want to achieve in terms of your goals uh, and then can triage you based on your engagement level, your literacy, all sorts of things into various things, some of which are doctors and nurses and other things as Can well. AI transform the role of a clinical user at the point of care? Yes, I think, it, I think it definitely can. And it's amazing all this time we haven't really been able to effectively put any assistance for clinicians really at the point of care, despite the fact that the technology has been available for many years. And I think it's more than can it, but it really has to if healthcare is going to be sustainable. At the moment, uh, we have cl uh, clinicians struggling to get through their work every day and burning out. Yet we know that the burden on the healthcare system is only going to increase through an ageing population who are more complex. So it's really uh, up to us uh, uh, as, a, as a healthcare system, uh, uh, people uh, at the coalface, administrators and vendors to come up with ways to integrate AI assistance for clinicians so they can do their work faster and also understand where clinical risk is so they can manage clinical risk in a proactive way rather than in a, res, you know, in a responsive or retrospective manner. Could you talk to us about the Maya Precision Platform and Maya Mobile? So the Maya Precision Platform is a, is, a, is a fairly new product over the last few years and it's really designed to run algorithms at scale and safely on existing IT infrastructure uh, in hospitals. So we take data from EMRs, we convert it into an open standards format called FIRE, Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources, and uh, based on that uh, open standards data, we run algorithms and we allow other people to plug in algorithms such as we partner with CSIRO and others to plug in new algorithms that can detect uh, problems in real time on, uh, on, on clinical data. And then we have mechanisms to put that back into clinical workflows such as web-based dashboards or mobile devices. Uh, and one of the products that we're, I'm talking about today is a fairly new product, uh, which is a mobile application that really presents a full electronic medical record data in real time on a mobile device, but then puts a lens of decision support and AI on top of that to highlight clinical risks and help automate certain workflows that we know will improve patient outcomes. So what we did instead is we actually brought the EMR into the mobile device. So here we have the full patient record including vitals, allergies, I'll get back to monitors a bit, results, tasks, medications, and, and uh, for example, you know, with the full medication list coming live out of the EMR. And you can then go in a second and review labs, for example, and look through you know, your critical results. So the ability to get to data in seconds is really important to uh, to, to, this whole, to this whole exercise. The main topics were really to give people an idea of the different types of AI out there and, and how some AI, you know, particularly that based on machine learning or black box models, require special care uh, in terms of being able to implement them safely in a healthcare system. Uh, some of the differences between the machine learning or descriptive models and the prescriptive stuff. In other words, how do we give guidance which is evidence-based? Uh, which you aren't really going to learn from, from data because we know a lot of practice isn't evidence-based. And then how do we uh, use an interoperable platform to layer on top of existing IT systems to add an extra layer of value and really uh, get the concept across that what's missing in healthcare is smart infrastructure that allows us to build on top of all the data out there to uh, turn it into actionable information uh, and decision support at the coalface through, through mobility. And so we roll this out uh, 
in uh, with some doctors, and, and it wasn't actually designed as an ED system, but we started out in the ED at, uh, at uh, in, in the uh, eHealth New South Wales pilot in Murrumbidgee, and what we found uh, was that the ED doctors took it up really, really well, and in a few days, they came back and said, could you turn on some extra notifications for us? And we were really surprised because, you know, doctors asking for more notifications is, is really rare. But what had happened is that because they'd won time in accessing the clinical data and the EMR data and they weren't having to go and find their computer and log in, they now said, actually, yeah, well, when someone comes in with a neck of feet, you know, a fall and, they, and their x-ray gets, I want to know when their x-ray is back so I can quickly check to send them on the right path. Or if someone's got a troponin and the second troponin's out, I want to know, you know, just so I know what to do with them. And, and so they come out with all these, you know, it took them a few days to sort of click on, oh, well, actually receiving notifications isn't going to destroy my day. In fact, it's going to really help me going back and looking up stuff. And we're saving them lots and lots of clicks. What do patients need to know about AI? Well, I think, I think, they, I think patients really need to understand that AI can uh, personalise care for them and provide them uh, their clinicians and I think gradually the, the patients themselves with information that they can engage in conversations and, and be a more uh, active participant in the decision making around their health care. I think that's going to be a really important part of the future because really the future of healthcare and its sustainability is really keeping people out of hospital. And the only way to do that is to engage patients in their care so they can understand when things are, are not going well and what the best avenues are uh, to mitigate problems before they become so bad they have to get into hospital.